a 24-year-old woman, presumably healthy, suddenly finds herself in the middle of a medical crisis. What happened? She overdosed on Effexor. But what does that mean? Effexor, also known by its generic name Venlafaxine, is a prescription medication typically used to treat depression and anxiety disorders. It works by adjusting the balance of certain natural substances in the brain, helping to restore a sense of well-being and energy. In our case, this young woman ingested an alarming amount of Effexor somewhere between 26 to 28 tablets, each containing 37 and a half milligrams of the drug. That's a total of approximately 975 to 1,050 milligrams. Significantly higher than the toxic dose of 937 and a half milligrams for adults. As a result, our patient is experiencing what we call mild to moderate venlafaxine toxicity. This is evidenced by her symptoms, which include hypertension and tachycardia, medical terms for high blood pressure and a faster than normal heart rate. These symptoms are typical signs of sympathetic overactivity, a state where the body's fight or flight response is in overdrive. Now, it's important to remember that not all symptoms are immediately apparent. This young woman could potentially experience agitation, anxiety, and palpitations, which are other common signs of this level of toxicity. Moreover, there are additional concerns. Venlafaxine toxicity can lead to more serious complications, such as delayed seizures, serotonin syndrome, and changes to the heart's rhythm, specifically QTC prolongation and QRS widening. These are dangerous conditions that can affect the electrical activity of the heart, potentially leading to life-threatening arrhythmias. As we navigate this medical emergency, it's crucial to remember that every second counts. Understanding the patient's condition and the risks involved is the first step towards providing effective treatment and hopefully a successful recovery. Now, let's delve into what happens in the body when someone overdoses on Effexor. When someone overdoses on Effexor, their body goes into overdrive. The heart rate increases, blood pressure shoots up, and the risk of seizures, serotonin syndrome, QTC prolongation, and QRS widening becomes very real. Let's take a closer look at the patient's vital signs. The blood pressure reading is 153 over 90, which is considered hypertensive. The heart rate is a rapid 115 beats per minute, a condition known as tachycardia, these symptoms indicate a heightened state of sympathetic overactivity, a kind of fight or flight response where the body's nervous system is working overtime. The EKG or electrocardiogram provides further insight. It shows us a heart rate of 90, a PR interval of 154, a QTC of 384 and a QRS of 84 milliseconds. While these are within normal limits, a slightly prolonged PR interval is noted. This is not typically indicative of severe cardiac toxicity, but it's something that medical professionals will keep a close eye on. Now, let's talk about the potential risks. The first is delayed seizures. As the name suggests, these seizures don't occur immediately after the overdose, but rather hours later. This is why medical professionals will typically observe a patient for a minimum of 18 to 24 hours following an Ifixor overdose. Next is serotonin syndrome, a potentially life-threatening condition that can occur when there's an excess of serotonin, a chemical your neurons produce in your brain. Symptoms include agitation, restlessness, and rapid heart rate, among others. Then we have QTC prolongation and QRS widening, which refer to changes in the heart rhythm and can increase the risk of serious irregular heart rhythms or cardiac arrest. So how do medical professionals handle a situation like this? What's the plan of action? Stay tuned as we delve into the treatment plan in the next scene. In a case like this, every second counts. The treatment plan must be swift and efficient. 
When it comes to managing a case of effects or overdose, a well-structured and proactive approach is crucial. First and foremost, the medical team needs to check several aspects. This includes serum, Tylenol, salicylate, alcohol, urine drug screen, and a comprehensive metabolic panel. These key parameters help provide a comprehensive understanding of the patient's condition. We're trying to gather as much information as possible to tailor the treatment plan effectively. Next, the patient's electrocardiogram, or EKG, is repeated if there's any clinical worsening. This is a crucial step because the EKG provides valuable insights into the heart's electrical activity. If the QRS duration exceeds 110 milliseconds, a sodium bicarb bolus is administered immediately followed by a repeated EKG. This step is of utmost importance because a prolonged QRS duration can indicate severe cardiac toxicity, which needs to be managed promptly to prevent further complications. But what if the QTC interval exceeds 500 milliseconds? In such a scenario, the focus shifts to optimizing electrolytes, including magnesium. This is because an extended QTC interval can lead to serious heart rhythm complications and maintaining electrolyte balance can help mitigate this risk. Additionally, benzodiazepines are administered for any apparent tremors, agitation, or seizure activity. These symptoms might be indicative of serotonin syndrome, a potentially life-threatening condition that can occur with an overdose of Effexor. Benzodiazepines help control these symptoms, providing some relief to the patient but the treatment doesn't end there. The patient must be observed for a minimum of 18 to 24 hours due to the risk of delayed seizures. This observation period is crucial because seizures can occur several hours after the overdose and immediate medical intervention can be life-saving. In conclusion, managing an effexor overdose involves a multi-pronged approach with the ultimate goal being the patient's safety and recovery. So what's the prognosis for our patient? How does this story end? Our patient ingested a potentially toxic dose of Effexor, presenting symptoms of hypertension and tachycardia indicative of mild to moderate venlafaxine toxicity. Immediate medical intervention was crucial. Tests were conducted and the patient's vital signs and EKG were closely monitored. The patient was observed for at least 18 to 24 hours due to the risk of delayed seizures. Administering benzodiazepines was planned for any tremors, agitation, or seizure activity. Repeat EKGs were scheduled if any clinical worsening occurred. This case underscores the importance of immediate medical intervention in overdose situations. It also highlights the importance of observation and ongoing monitoring to ensure the best possible outcome. Remember, every medication has its risks and benefits. It's important to use them responsibly and seek immediate help in case of an overdose even in challenging situations, medical professionals are equipped to handle the crisis and ensure the best possible outcome. Thanks for watching Medical Toxicology. Take care.